Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Out Books, and today I'm here with a video of a trope that I'm obsessed with because I love angsty romances. I love it when our characters can't be together, but they really want to be together. Something's keeping them apart, and I was doing my historical romance recommendation video and realized I just love it when they're already in a relationship. Now, I know not a lot of people like that. I know sometimes it may lead to cheating, but... I just love it. I love it when they are madly in love with someone and they can't have them because they're already taken and then somehow they find their way to be with each other. So I have a good list here and I'm so excited to share them with you. Make sure you leave me your recommendations down below of romances where they fall for someone who's taken but then end up getting together anyways or being together anyways, finding their way to one another anyways, whether or not there is cheating. Now most of these there is not but some of them there is. So I will get to it. The first one's one I read recently, and that is Sin and in Ink by Naima Simone. This one, the it was more taboo when the couple first met each other, and so our hero meets her, and he really likes her. He's in MMA fighting. His brother was too, but then she ends up getting together with his brother, marrying his brother, and then his brother dies, and he thinks it's his fault. His mom blames him, so there's a lot of animosity between him and his family, but she actually, I'm pretty sure, like, lives with his parents. I'm pretty sure because there was drama about like her wanting to move out and move on and he has always liked her though. He liked her when his brother was dating her and now she's a widow and she works at his tattoo shop. He is a tattoo artist and it's so so good. They end up liking each other. Obviously it's super taboo because now it's his brother's widow and he feels like he's the reason his brother died and he doesn't do MMA anymore but he is a tattoo artist and she decides she wants a tattoo and it's really good. I will say it's really short so it's like just over over 200 pages I think and so there were a couple scenes that I really wanted out of this that we didn't get but it's definitely a short and steamy romance and it was very taboo and it was very fun. Then we have The Truth About Heartbreak by B. Celeste. This one there is cheating in it just to let you know but the heroine was adopted when she was I think in middle school and she is instantly really drawn to her adopted brother's best friend and he's very overprotective of her but he just knows he can never do anything because he's supposed to see her as a sister and he ends up forcing himself into a relationship just to deny his feelings for our heroine and so years go by and the heroine's in her 20s and it's their romance and he is in a relationship when they're trying to figure out their own thing and I didn't mind the cheating because I understood why he was holding on so much to that relationship because he was just in such denial about his feelings for his best friend's adoptive sister and this one's definitely angsty and I really enjoyed it. Then we have Violent Delights by Jessica Hawkins. This one is another uh, brother romance and I know there's a lot of these out there and I just love them so much where she's dating one brother but ends up liking the other brother and the other brother likes her while she's dating the other brother. So our heroine is really uh, feels like she's madly in love with this guy and like knows she wants to marry him. It's a mafia romance and I believe she like went off to America in her family's from Mexico and they are head of like the Mexico mafia. I don't know what the name is but her mother was actually brutally murdered when she was young and they all think it was her boyfriend's brother and so he's been like exiled and hiding and now she has returned and he is back and she's like why is he here? Why are we letting him be here? And um, things happen and I don't want to spoil anything but she is forced into a relationship with him by other people and I've only read the first book, so I don't know how it ends, but I know she's supposed to end up with him, so... It was really good in the first book, so it's also hate to love because she hates him and she thinks like she's like meant to be with this other guy who is his brother, so read this. Then we have Say Yes to the Marquest by Tessa Dare. This one, our heroine's been engaged to this guy for eight years and she's like kind of embarrassed because she's like, it's, we're still not married. Like, am I not good enough? People are making fun of me. So she marches her way down to her betrothed brother's house apartment, I don't know what you call it back then, and he is actually like a bare knuckle fighter and I love that about his character and she demands that he helps her. She's like, you're gonna help me plan this wedding, you're gonna help me drag your brother down the aisle and I'm finally gonna get married. So they are planning this wedding together for her to marry his brother. 
but she falls in love with him. So it is so good. I love Tessa Dare's historicals. They're just so fun and so easy to fly through and I just love their romance and their dynamic and I vividly remember like reading the initial scene of her like banging down his door and he opens it and he was like in the middle of practicing for his fighting and it, it's just really good. I know I recommended this like all the time back when I read it, but Her Night with the Duke definitely works for this by Diana Quincy. Our heroine spends the night with the Duke at an inn and it's like it started out with like she shows up at this inn because she needs to stay and she's a widow and there's like no room so all these guys are being like very crude like oh join me and then she sees this duke and he invites her and they spend a very passionate night together and then the next morning she realizes that he is the one that's betrothed to her stepdaughter who is like her age so she married a much older man got these stepchildren and the stepdaughter and her are really close friends and the duke is the one who's supposed to marry her stepdaughter and it's their romance and it's so good because they're both just like this can't happen especially she is the one who's like no you're supposed to marry my stepdaughter like go do that but they like can't forget their night together and it was so good I just love that angst and it's not every day you fall for your stepdaughter's betrothed so it was really good another one I don't talk about a lot that I saw McKay talk about from oh hey it's McKay and her favorite standalones is actually the unrequited by Saffron Kent I read this years ago I want to say it was like four years ago that I read this and Saffron Kent's not for everybody she definitely writes very taboo romances and this one the heroine is a college student and she like literally is obsessed with her professor that's why it's called the unrequited she has an unrequited love for him like she already had been obsessively in love with someone in high school that didn't end well like she is like obsessed like that's her personality she's like hyper focuses and become obsessed with people and so now it's college and she's obsessed with her professor and her professor's married but they have a romance so I don't want to say too much more about this it's definitely a very unique romance where you're like should I be even rooting for this romance am I supposed to like this heroine but it was so good so if you want that kind of romance read the unrequited then I have another one that I feel like I don't talk about a lot because I read it I think over a year ago I don't remember if it was two years ago but that's Heartbreak Warfare by Heather Orgeron and Kate Stewart a lot more people have been talking about this when it comes to love triangles and our heroine is married and she's in the military and she is deployed and what happens is she is kidnapped with this guy and her and this guy are really good friends but they have like a lot of chemistry but they never like given into it and then they're kidnapped together and go through a horrific experience together and then she comes back and doesn't know if she can truly be with her husband anymore or if she wants to be with this other man because he completely understands what she went through and she still needs to go through and she still needs to deal with what had happened to her and so this one is definitely love triangle and it's very emotional but it is very good so if you want love triangle where she is taken where she is off limits because she is married she has a husband but she has this other guy that really likes her and understands her this is definitely emotional but I recommend it then we have with every heartbeat by Linda Cage I don't really talk about this series a lot anymore but I love the series that I stopped I'm so bad at finishing series but this one I think was the last book I read and she's in love with her roommates slash best friends boyfriend so this is the case where though like the best friend is like not a good person and definitely like manipulates her but she stays best friends with her because they have such a long past and because the uh, the roommates going through something and they definitely like give her a past for that when they really shouldn't but our heroine is just too good-hearted to ever betray her best friend or stop being her best friend but she is definitely in love with her best friend's boyfriend and I love the best friend's boyfriend so much he's such a great character this one was just really good and really hit me in the feels so if you want that read this but I definitely love the rest of the series so do read it in order I think this is book four but all the books are great. Then we have The Surviving Trace by Kalia Reed. This one is time travel and our heroine is actually engaged and she finds, she's like owns a antique shop and she finds this picture and she has like a sense of deja vu, like she's seen this before and she like realizes that she dreamed about that guy the night before seeing his photo. And then she finds herself time traveling and waking up as that guy's wife I don't remember if they're already married or not but she like looks exactly like this woman from this time period and takes her place but she's like um how do I get back and Etienne is the man and he are he hates her he hates her who she's supposed to be in that time period so he hates her and she's trying to figure out how well like what's happening and also like why she's falling for this man when she's already engaged so it's 
it's really good. And the last two I've talked about a lot, so that's why I'm saving them for last. We have My American Duchess by Eloisa James. This one, our hero, sees our heroine at a ball. He's like, she's the one I want. He talks to her. He loves how refreshing she is. She's an American heiress. She doesn't follow society standards or rules. She doesn't know them, but she is taken. And he realizes she's taken by his brother, who just proposed to her, like, that day. She's already been engaged twice, and so she's like, this third time, I've got to see it through. Like, I can't be this laughing stock. And he knows his brother needs to marry an heiress because he has his issues. He's an alcoholic he spends all of his money so our hero knows his brother like needs to marry this woman but um, our hero wants her so you know what happens and the last one is my favorite book in the Bridgerton series and that's When He Was Wicked by Julia Quinn this one mm, it hits me because our hero loves his best friend's wife I love that trope so much and what happens in here kind of like what Sin and Ink happens Francesca is married to the love of her life and he was Scottish and he dies and it's devastating to her and she ends up falling in love with his best friend but the best friend has loved her Michael's loved her since she was betrothed to his best friend so he has been had this unrequited love for her that he has been keeping to himself and now he's just like I can't like take over his life because even Michael also takes his title and he feels like he's betraying his best friend he doesn't want to like become his best friend and take over his life he feels like he's stealing everything from him and they were already both devastated by his loss because they were both super close with him but it's so good I love that angst so much that's why this one was one of my favorites in the series and those are some romance recommendations for people who fall for people who are taking but they end up together anyways so I love this trope so much give me all that angst let me know if you have recommendations especially if it's like your best friends person because like you always hang out with them because like you hang out with your best friend so you're hanging out with your best friend's significant other but you secretly want them so let me know that's all I have as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day